Talking about a revolution sounds Don't you know what? Talking about a revolution sounds Gentlemen, it is Tuesday, the 18th day of November. The year is 2014. And if you can hear the sound of my voice, then you are the revolution. I am Smoking Joe McHale, and this is the Revolutionary Nightly News, smashing through the lies of the Illuminati, smashing through the lies of the New World Order, smashing through the lies of the government, who do nothing but lie. Well, hang on, they do a few other things. They cheat, they steal, they rape, they pillage, they murder. They hurt people, right? I'm very happy, I'm very energized. Can you feel what's happening in the world today? Can you feel the global awakening against the tyranny that the free people of this world are facing? Can you feel it? I can feel it. I felt it especially strongly the past few days because there's been a much greater response the Revolutionary 90 News. And although a lot of it is people attacking me, calling me an idiot, calling me a conspiracy theorist, saying they hope that I get stabbed, hope that I should kill myself, I think it was Oscar Wilde who said, the only worse thing than people talking about you is people not talking about you. And I said this yesterday, I painted a big target on my chest to allow all the people who believe the government lies to attack me because I know my chest is solid. I did a full body workout last night, right? I'm strong enough to take the criticism because I know I'm spreading the truth. I'm spreading peace, love and freedom while the people who support the state are supporting violence, hate, war and murder. That's what it comes down to. If you're a statist, if you support the government, that's what you support and it's time for you to make a moral decision. Instead of tacitly going along with whatever the government does, you've got to realize that by tacitly supporting it, you are the one who is, by proxy, guilty of doing the same thing. Right? Let's look at this video, this disgusting video of a whole bunch of big, burly cops with little man syndrome beating up a double amputee, a guy with no legs, and a small woman who was with him, who was in fact his carer. Let's look at this disgusting video.
This guy has no legs. You guys are fucking scared. Oh my god! Oh my god! It is very legal for us to do this. Ow. Doesn't that make your blood boil? Won't you have the courage to stand up for the people who can't defend themselves? You see that cop laying into him, right? You see that? I've been beaten up by cops before for no reason. I've had the most, uh, one of the times that this happened, I was beaten up by about six of them, kicking me, stepping on me, right? For about half an hour, laughing at me, making jokes about me, trying to get off on that feeling of power. The most senior cop there asked one of the women, if you can call her that, one of the female cops there, to stand on my arm while I was in a prone position to see if she could break it. They were his words, right? I've done a bachelor degree in policing and criminology. I know the mindset of these people, right? They get off on power. They get off on dominating because they're weak, small penis dudes, right? They got no power in their lives and they want to overcome their lack of power in their personal life by expressing the power of the state and I'm not gonna stand for it. You can guarantee that if I saw that happening, that I would step in and stop them from mercilessly beating that guy. Maybe not physically, but you better believe that I would get in their face. But how many people are gonna get in their face in a situation like that? Not many, huh? Not many. I guarantee you, well, 
you can see exactly what happened. Everyone's going to be out there with their phones. Say, oh, wow. We've become a society of observers, a society of watchers who not only waste our lives in front of screens, watching other people do things, but when things are actually happening in front of us, we put a screen in between us and the event that's occurring and we're not in reality. I urge you to step into reality, to find your compassion, to find your love. I don't want people to get bashed for no reason. I don't want people to be intimidated. I don't want people to be harassed. I don't want people to be oppressed. And this continues. Of course, you remember I talked about this yesterday, how the police killed this Brazilian kid for stealing two packs of Tim Tams. And this goes on from RT. Ohio police kill mentally, allegedly kill mentally ill woman by slamming head on sidewalk. 80 year old army vet and cancer survivor mercilessly, mercilessly, mercilessly beaten by police who feared for their lives. And of course that's what they're gonna say. That's what I learned during this degree. Police all sit in a room together and corroborate their evidence statements saying, he attacked us first, he was resisting, he was striking us while at the same time, it, it just disgusts me to have these weak people preying on other people. And I'm not going to stand for it, right? Right? I'm not a coward. I'm not a pussy. I'm not going to lay down and bend over because you've got the power of the state behind you, right? Right? Look into my eyes and understand that I am dead serious. And other people are catching on. Other people have had enough of the oppression. They want freedom. That's what I want. And of course, not only they do they commit violence on a micro level, beating up individual people, but on a macro level, dropping bombs, killing millions, funding their supposed enemies so they can continue this perpetual war, this perpetual fraud, this perpetual killing. From Infowars.com, Obama ways expanded. CIA training arming of ISIS-linked Syrian rebels. The Obama administration has been weighing plans to escalate the CIA's role in arming and training fighters in Syria, a move aimed at accelerating covert US support to moderate rebel factions, while the Pentagon is preparing to establish its own training bases, US officials said. And of course, for decades, they have armed the Islamic radical people over there in the Middle East, giving them billions of dollars, funding them, sheltering them, hiding them, allowing them to commit these acts of terror, these atrocities, killing people, chopping their heads off. They're trained by the CIA. They're funded by the United States government, right? So they can continue to have their wars, take your tax money, and then oppress you here at home. How do they oppress you here at home? Just one example. New terror, anti-terror laws allow ASIA to torture from news, topnews.com. It is not clear why the Attorney General George Brandis believes it is necessary for the Australian government to have the latitude to resort to torture, but you could drive a truck through the, his National Security Legislation Amendment Bill and not hit anything that says, do not torture people. I've spoken to two legal experts and one outraged senator about this bill and it is obvious that by allowing torture by government security agents lies within the scope of the draft law. Read it for yourself. Under the heading Immunity from Liability, Section 35K of the Draft National Security Legislation Amendment Bill Number 1, 2014 Bill states, a participant in a special intelligence operation is not subject to any civil or criminal liability for or in relation to conduct if the conduct does not involve the participant engaging in any conduct that causes the death of or serious injury to any person or involves the commission of a sexual offence against that person or causes significant loss of or serious damage to property. You don't need the advice of a QC to work out that this provision states that it is unlawful to kill people, cause serious injury, sexually abuse or cause serious damage to a person's property, but deliberately leaves about 150 shades of grey ranging from ethical ambiguity to outright black ops. They have laws that they can torture you and they're exempt from it. The police have laws that they can strip search you and they're exempt from it, right? 
U.S. military considers sending combat troops to battle ISIS forces in Iraq like they haven't been in Iraq since the 90s, since before then. Such ridiculous propaganda. And of course, this is off the back of the greatest false flag event in history. And people talking to me on the internet saying, how can you say 9-11 was a false flag? What can you say to someone like that? Look it up, man. It's not as if there is a lack of information on this. But you want to believe the gunman line. You got to excuse me because normally I'll be pressing a button earlier on to record the screen and all of the articles that I've been talking about today, but I forgot to press that button and I only just pressed it now. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today, actually two more things. I was talking about 9-11. From yournewswire.com, 24 hard facts about 9-11 that cannot be debunked. You be the judge. One, nanothermite was found at the dust at ground zero, peer-reviewed in the Bentham Opal Chemical Physics Journal, Niels Harrett, Thermite Bentham, The Great Thermite Debate. It continues, 1,700 plus engineers and architects support a real independent 9-11 investigation. The total collapse of World Trade Center 7 in 6.5 seconds at free fall acceleration. NIST admits 2.25 seconds. Larry Silverstein used the term pull it. Steel framed high rise buildings have never totally collapsed from fire or structural damage. Building 7 was not hit by a plane. You can go through. Dick Cheney was in command of NORAD while running war games. There was a stand down order. Ah, six out of the 10 commissioners believe the 9-11 commission report was set up to fail. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. But if you don't want to find out what's going on, if you want to attack me, it's easy. But it's a lot harder to look for the truth. It's a lot harder to get that criticism. You got to be a man. You got to be a real woman to do that. You got to have the spirit of humanity. You got to break away from the spirit of hatred and the spirit of domination that the government has imposed upon society through media, through police, through the military. We need to come together in the spirit of love. That's all I'm saying, right? I'm trying to expose how the government is committing violence against us, right? And I've had ongoing debate with people who are attacking me because I said, I don't support the government. I don't support any violence. I'm an anarchist, which means I want no rulers, no government. And they're saying, anarchy means you want the violent overthrow of the government. No, the word anarchy has been skewed and manipulated. The meaning of it has been skewed and manipulated to conflate anyone who's an anarchist with someone who wants the violent overthrow of the government. I want the overthrow of the government, but I want no violence whatsoever. I'm here preaching peace. Why would I want violence? How could I use violence to, to carry out my plan for peace? It's contradictory. It doesn't make sense. Anarchy means no rulers. And to look at the true meaning of a word, it helps to look at the etymology, the history of how that word came to being. And if you go to the online etymology dictionary, I'll read the definition for anarchy, a noun, 1530s, from the French anarchy, or directly from medieval Latin anarchia, from Greek anarchia, lack of a leader, the state of people without a government. In Athens, used of the year of 30 times 404 BC, where there was no archon, no ruler. Noun of state from anarchos, rulerless from an without and archos leader see archon this is what i mean by anarchy and this is what i mean when i say that i'm an anarchist i in no way support the violent overthrow of the government what i support is bringing down the government peacefully because I don't want any rulers. I don't want any masters. I don't want any people telling me what to do. I don't want any people telling you what to do, what kind of vegetable you can grow, where you can walk down the street, where you can drive, while they kill people all over the world. Government is a magnet to psychopaths who get into government and then use their power to hurt people because that's what they like to do. Have a look at what's going on in the world around you. 
The thing is though, I can feel the awakening happening. It is a beautiful thing. I can feel it. I know that we're going to win. I know that we will defeat tyranny. And I believe and declare that we will crush the new world order. The revolution is here. Spread this message. Woo!